743 here on Thursday's Breakfast Television, the Coquitlam Search and Rescue. Back with us, Steve Chapman, Alan Thomas. Uh, thanks for joining us, gentlemen. And this is an important topic, especially as we start the year. Uh, many adventure seekers are out there on a hike. What to do if we get lost? And what is that starting point? We've always talked preparation, but if we are out there and realize we have lost our way, what is the first thing we need to do, Steve? So the first thing is just to stop, take a minute, think about your situation. Um, what to do depends on who you are and your experience. So, you know, if you're a child, then you just stay put, hug a tree. Um, if you're an experienced hiker, then um, you'll try and find your way back to the trail. So quite often that might be as simple as retracing your steps for the last five minutes and then getting back on the trail. Um, Alan, this notion of, of getting unlost, uh, following along Steve's lead here, what is the key component? Because I can only imagine, if you are the average hiker, the panic attack that can set in, realizing, I don't know where I am. I think it's important to make sure that you don't panic, as Steve was mentioning. Uh, retrace your trail and uh, if you can find your way back. Um, and just uh, just to be aware of your your circumstances, we always tell people as you're hiking, uh, be aware of your circ circumstances. If often people are hiking and they're having a conversation with their partner and that type of thing, and they just totally lose track of the trail. And uh, if you're aware of your situation uh, on a constant basis, then you you become less lost, in other words, and that really helps a lot. Steve, at what point do, do we uh, break out the cell phone and call 911? So, I mean, basically, it's when all your options of finding your way back are gone, right? So, it may be getting dark or beginning to get dark. It's important to call 911 as soon as you possibly can because the earlier that call is made, it gives the rescue um, people more time to respond. If there's an hour of daylight, we can get a helicopter out to look for you. If it's already dark, then that's not an option. And Alan, if we realize nightfall is it, we're completely lost, we're going to have to spend the night uh, wherever you are, how do we handle that situation to, to stay as warm as possible? Well, I think it's important to, uh, as we say, hunker down and find a spot where you're going to have some shelter. The key thing is stay dry and stay warm. And uh, again, have, have some equipment that uh, can signal like a whistle and a light and that type of thing. But um, if it's in the nightfall and, and you find a spot where you can stay as dry and as warm as possible. Um, if it's, if light, first light comes and people are starting to look for you, if you can get into an opening where you're more visible, uh, then you're more visible from the air, if it's a helicopter search, or from the ground, uh, if we're looking for someone. So if they've got a, a bright colored uh, item, maybe uh, a shelter, uh, poncho, garbage bag, that type of thing, or uh, also getting in, making a signal on the ground uh, in an open, op more open area would be helpful for anybody searching. And a signal just using branches in the Bran front of an branches arrow? Branches and rocks, and, you know, maybe a, a, a couple of branches that form an arrow head mm -hmm. that would direct you to where you're uh, located. Well, some of the advice that I've heard that uh, you two relayed during the break was the idea of don't go downhill. And in my mind, that's the first thing I would do to try and escape the scenario. Why is it important not to go downhill? It's basically down to the shape of our local mountains. A lot of our local mountains are flat on the top, and then they get increasingly more steep as you go downhill. Um, and then when you run into um, where a creek is flowing, that steepness gets amplified. So you go down and down it gets steeper and steeper and quite often you'll end up in a band of cliffs. Um, we've located people in places where they can't go up and they can't go down and they're stuck on a ledge and um, it's a pretty dangerous and precarious place they've found themselves in. So just avoid going down if you don't know where you are and you don't know that there's safe ground below you. Well, Coquitlam, S-A-R-W-C.ca is the website. You've got the list of the top 10 essentials to take when you're going out for a hike to keep yourself safe. And, I mean, the avalanche concerns have come back in the news. Just overall, Alan, if you could close us out, quick reminders of what to be aware of before you, you hit the hike. 
At this time of year, uh, it's really important to go prepared for the weather. Uh, proper footwear and uh, items that are going to prevent you from slipping, uh, micro spikes or crampons and things like that. Uh, dressing appropriately, warm and that type of thing. If you're going into avalanche country, you need three things. You need a transceiver, a probe and a shovel. Uh, you also need to be aware of the avalanche bulletin. They, they rate the scale of avalanche danger and uh, of all of those types of things you need to know how to use it. So uh, very important to, if you're going into avalanche country. The other thing too is uh, uh, transceiver, probe and shovel are, are no good if you're just by yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to go out with other people for sure. Great tips right here. Again, check out the website for more resources. Gentlemen, great to have you back on the show. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a break.